Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Happy New Year coming up, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to read three verses and we're going to talk. Psalms chapter 147, just verses 1 to 3. Listen. <clears throat> Pardon. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. I got a little question I want to ask you. Have you ever wondered why God would send Jesus in to this world to take on the skill of a carpenter. Had it ever dawned on you? Or had it ever occurred to you to even question that? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what revelation I got from it. Carpenters build. Just listen to the words of music. Carpenters not only build, but carpenters do repair work. They will replace a leg of a chair or build and, 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 and fortify the back of, of, of something, a piece of furniture that needs fortification. It needs to be more sturdy. Maybe it's a little weak or wobbly, and a, a carpenter knows how to strengthen that up and gird it up so it can stand strong and handle the weights that are put on it, depending upon what kind of furniture it is. Now, my question to you is, have you ever experienced what it feels like for God to build you up on the inner man? Have you ever experienced what it's like for God to prop you up on your leaning side, so to speak? You know, every one of us has weaknesses, do we not? And in those weaknesses and fallacies, in our nature, in our characters, in our emotional stabilities, we have issues, you guys. Every single one of us has at least one issue in our lives. And some of us run out of fingers and toes counting all those issues up. But what I love about the work that Jesus does is he comes and he heals he heals the broken heart. When he says to Jerusalem, he doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth the outcast of Israel. Listen, you guys, every one of us, we are the New Testament Jerusalem. We are the New Testament Israelites. We are the people of God under the covenant and the promises of Abraham. And listen, we have every right to every blessing that God promised the nation of Israel. But what I want to explain to you is no matter how people treat you, no matter if your own mother didn't want you and you feel like an outcast in your own family or you feel like an outcast in school, no matter where you feel, you may feel like an outcast right there in a the church. It doesn't matter. Here's the... Here's the the, the bones of it as far as I'm concerned. God has no outcasts because all that come to him are part of his body. Listen, you guys. When you feel like a nobody, when you feel like, like something that's so dirty that nobody holy would want to touch you, when you feel like there is no hope for you because you came from the wrong side of the tracks or from the wrong type of lifestyle and your background is so grungy and so disgusting even to you that you bear so much shame, do you know all of those emotions you're dealing with all of that torment, God has the ability and the desire to remove it all. 
You don't have to walk around on the place of this on the face of this planet with your head hung low and your tail tucked between your legs. You don't have to do that. Because God, he builds, he restores, he gathers, he includes, oh, he loves, and he heals. He strengthens us when we're weak. He he calms us when we're nervous and uptight and we blow off at every little given uh, moment of frustration. He calms our fears. He removes our hurts and our guilt trips and he, he, he erases our shame. I want you to take a moment and say this prayer because you need to know what it's like to live without fear. You need to know what it's like to live saturated in the love of God. You need to know what it's like to be included at all times on his good side, within his favor. You need to know what it's like to feel God smile on you. You need to know what it feels like to be totally healed and have your mind set straight. I am telling you, it is heaven on earth. No matter what you go through, and earth will bring us some hell. Trust me when I say that. But when you have all that God can put inside of you to gird you up under the weight, and strengthen you on the inner man and, and fortify you. And whew, there is nothing else. There's no counselor. There are no pills. There, there aren't any medications, no high, no sex, no people, nobody, no man, no woman, no relationship, nothing that can do that for you. Only God. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. All those stripes, all those scars on his back, all the bleeding, all the flesh that's been torn from those whips. Those scars were put there to remove ours. That's why he dealt with all of that. Yes, he came to forgive us for sin and deliver us from all evil. But guess what, you guys? He also came to resurrect the beauty that he put within and bury the ugliness, the fear, the sadness, the, the confusion, the chaos, the torment, the hurts. He came to erase all of that. I am going to ask you, please do this. Say this prayer with me. Father, I ask you, this is for unbelievers, and we're going to get to believers in a second. So you believers don't go anywhere because we got to pray for you. We have a prayer for you. Listen, for the unsaved or the, the not so sure or those straddling the fence, you're not quite sure where you stand on the Jesus thing. Say this prayer anyway, because you know what? It's better to be safe than sorry. So listen. Say, Father, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I accept your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Heal me. Fix me. Put me together. Fill me with your love and teach me what your real love is all about and give me purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For you saved. I want you to pray this prayer because some of you saved may have never asked God to fill you with, the, with his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit is a regulator his Holy Spirit is a governor. Listen, when you are, I'm trying to think of, okay, here we go. 
His Holy Spirit is like the thermostat. When you bu bubble up and you overboil and you overheat, the Holy Spirit will cool you and calm you down. When you are about to go off and blow your stack, the Holy Spirit will turn the fire out and, re and push the release valve to relieve some of that pressure. And you will feel the pressure literally going. The Holy Spirit will give you words of knowledge and wisdom and, 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 and give you all kind of direction. And he will pull you this way and pull you that way and stop you and do whatever it takes to help you stay on the right path to your destiny. Alongside you at the same time, he's also protecting you from all danger, unseen and seen, and from any kind of hazard that is not destined for you. And whatever happens is about purpose. And it is not God's will that any should perish. So anyway, okay, let's get to the prayer. This is the prayer for you. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to fill me with your Holy Spirit Fill me with all the fruits of your Holy Spirit, which means love, mercy, forgiveness, kindness, understanding, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, humility, kindness. I mean, come on now. And love, baby. Love. L-O-V-E. Agape love. Unconditional love. That's the God kind. So you pray that. Now say this, Father, I ask you to come deep into my heart where all the soot and the filth is and go into my mind where all those nasty memories are. And I ask you in the name of Jesus to heal my mind, heal my heart, erase the pain of my memories, Lord, enable me to forgive the people I don't even want to forgive. Give me the desire to just be willing. Enable me to do what I can't do. And I'll do it by your power and by your grace. I will forgive because you want me to. Not because I want to, maybe, but because you want me to. And... Lord, go in here and all that rejection I got and all those negative words and negative reinforcement, would you please erase all of the anger and the hurt and the, the, the emotional uh, rage that boils up in me that I'm out of control with? Would you take all that hurt out and, 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 and calm me down, calm my nerves down? I can't, I can't control my anger. Father, here's another one. Would you help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to keep my mouth shut so that I don't make a bad situation worse with my tongue. I don't ignite a fire over fuel and make matters crazy. Help me, Lord, not to live a life of chaos. Help me not to be so quick to give in to my emotions, my desires, my tongue, my mind. Help me, Lord. Give me the Holy Spirit fruit of self-control in the name of Jesus. And enable me to live this holy life the way you really want me to live it. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now that you've prayed that prayer, you stay in God's face, you guys. I am so serious at every given time. Somebody hurts your feelings, blah, blah, blah. You turn around in your mind. You quickly say, Lord, take that hurt out. Take that negativity out of my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I don't want to waste my emotions on somebody else's trip. You hear me? You walk in peace. You pursue peace. And you walk away. If somebody's trying to get ugly, walk away. 
Anyway, I'm done. And I hope you have a tremendous new year. I don't want to hear about anybody sabotaging their future and their opportunities because they got too angry and they could not keep their mouth shut. So that's why you need the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there's so much more to God's Spirit that comes inside of you and works and rebuilds and heals and removes and cleanses and, and refurbishes. I mean, there's so much the Holy Spirit does for us. And I really hope and pray, really hope and pray that you experience some serious victories, you guys. I want to hear some, some testimonies coming back. Say, do you know I tried this and I said that and I asked God the other and I am not angry at my brother anymore. I am not mad at my mother anymore. You know what? I don't even feel any anger. I couldn't believe when I saw so-and-so. I didn't feel all that rage. You know, the kind of makes you want to put your foot where the sun don't shine. I don't even feel that anymore. Those are the kind of testimonies that you will have. You'll have a slew of them. Because God's work is thorough. And when he removes the pain, baby, it is gone. I can tell you I have been raped. I have been molested. I have been lied on. I have been betrayed. I, I mean, we won't even go down that list. But let me tell you this. I can tell those stories in detail, baby. And it ain't going to happen now. <laughs> but I don't feel any pain from it. I have had mother, father, sister, sister die in my family. And the hardest for me was my husband. And God healed my heart. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit knows how to handle us. So lean on God. He will prop you up on your weak side. If you need a crutch, baby, God is the best crutch you can ask for and the best one to use. He won't fold under your weight. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed new year. Amen. Amen.